Ladies and gentlemen, Brandon Flowers. Good evening. How the hell are you? I'm Brandon Flowers. I'm honored to be here with you all tonight. New wave, post-punk, power pop. Tonight, they're all riding together into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. On the back of what is now established as one of the greatest debut albums ever made, the Cars were named Best New Artist in the 1978 Rolling Stone Reader's Poll. And 40 years later, they still sound like a new band to me. A lot gets written about rock and roll. People try to describe it. But it was once said that writing about music is like dancing about architecture. You just gotta hear it to know. And when I first heard the Cars, like so many others, I knew. It was 1994 and I was a 13-year-old misfit kid living in a small town smack dab in the middle of Utah. We're talking, hold on. <laughs> We're talking no stoplight small. We're talking settle our differences at the water tower after school small. Sometimes it even felt a little bit untouched by the previous four or five decades, like everything was still in black and white. Well, my big brother Shane had the 12 years on me and the intuition to come and swoop me up on the weekends. I'd stay at his house up in Spanish Fork, another thriving Utah metropolis, <laughs> about an hour's drive up the I-15. And on those critical and impressionable rescue missions, he'd play me his music. There were a lot of great bands passed on to me by my brother, and there have been many more since. But the Cars were the first band that I truly fell in love with, and you never forget your first. Rick Okasik, not Okasik, you're all saying it wrong. Rick Okasik found bassist Benjamin Orr, his silver and gold, right here in Ohio back in 1968. Come on. Fast friends, they stuck together through various incarnations, always confident that they were on the right track. Whether it was Milkwood or Richard and the Rabbits, they had a powerful belief in one another's talent. Okasik and Orr's road eventually led them to Boston where they found drummer David Robinson, guitarist Elliot Easton, and in January 1977, added keyboard player Greg Hawks. Now they were complete. A slick machine with a 340 V8 under the hood that ran on synergy, experimentation, and a redefined cool. The Cars had it all, the looks, the hooks, beat romance lyrics, killer choruses, guitar solos that pissed off your parents, dazzling mu music videos, not to mention, not to mention, the best song in any movie scene that featured a girl slowly getting out of a pool and taking her top off. That's right, that's right. I'll take moving in stereo over the Star Wars theme any day of the week. They existed in the 70s and 80s in the highly coveted sweet spot where credibility and acclaim meets huge commercial success. Now, I was born in 81, but I've seen Boogie Nights. And as I understand it, while everybody else was sweating it up on the dance floor in their polyester suits or fighting it out in the clubs, these guys cruised in and made you look like you were working too hard. First, you had Rick one of the world's most enigmatic and iconic frontmen with his cool, detached vocals. <laughs> An inscrutable Dylan and Velvets fan with a very stylish jacket pocket full of power choruses. <laughs> Benjamin, a gifted multi-instrumentalist, also packed some serious heat. Armed with a haunting baritone and a classic rock chops, his contributions were a crucial part of what made the cars unique. Then we have Berkeley-trained guitarist Elliot. Where is he at? I see him. As understated as he was, he was the band's secret weapon. With his distinctive and tasteful playing, he played what was right for the song and still managed to have his personality explode without stepping on anybody else's toes. Next is Greg, a multi-instrumentalist with a penchant for synthesizers and sequencing. It was his inventive spirit that felt so refreshing and made the car sound so right. Bands today still try to emulate the balance he found in marrying keyboards to guitars. And last, but certainly, certainly not least, you're with me. <laughs> David Robinson. 
Besides his genius minimal drumming, David had other talents. It was David who named the band, finding a spark of magic in the mundane. The former modern lover also created the license plate logo and the iconic album art that spawned a genre of album art direction all of its own. For decades, bands have been referencing them in their cover art in the hopes that maybe from the bins it would scream, try us, you'll love us, just like you love the cars. I might have even made a couple of those myself. Over the years, the cars have achieved what every kid who ever sweated out in a garage dreamed of, including a young Kurt Cobain, who chose My Best Friend's Girl as one of his first tunes to learn. And what they achieved was greatness, and they left a comet trail behind them, writing and recording songs that have transcended into classics. Just what I needed. My Best Friend's Girl. Good times roll. You might think. Heartbeat City, since you're gone, touch and go, you're all I've got tonight. Now that's good rock and roll, and good rock and roll is powerful. It can lift us up, it can pull us through, it can even transform little black and white towns in the middle of nowhere into electrifying color, surging with possibility. So when in his own masterpiece, American Pie, Don McLean asks, do you believe in rock and roll? Can music save your mortal soul? The answer tonight and forever will be an unequivocal and an emphatic yes. We thank the cars, Elliot, Greg, Dave, Benjamin, and Rick. We're standing on the shoulders of giants. This band means so much to me and to millions of others. I know that Benjamin is here sharing this moment with you guys tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm over the moon, and it's my great honor to induct into the Rock and Roll of Hall of Fame, the Cars. <laughs>